So I think it was on again. mute. <laughs> so just for the last one, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Something must happen. Right. Must okay. Happen. So here we are for Dinya Wahda Life, the last one in this series. We'll keep you informed of what's going to happen next. We'll see as the situation develops. The Dinya Wahda Life team's page will remain open. I'm Desiree Falson. I'm Victor Falson. And we are both teachers with the Dinya Wahda program, which is BirdLife Malta's run together with the Education Directorate. Today's subject, well, what do you expect today is going to be? Well, since we turned into summer last week, well, officially, um, uh, right. this uh, we decided that this last program will be about nature in summer, what happens to nature in summer, at least here in Malta, because it all depends on the seasons and what parts of the world you live in. OK, so that's going to be the subject for today's um, uh, episode. A lot to say, but of course, as always, we'll try to keep it within half an hour. So. OK, yes. Switching to sh sharing screen, I just blundered through. So we start here with our mystery objects. Can oh. you guess what this is? It's beautiful, whatever it is, isn't it? I think it's a painting. <laughs> it can't be because it's a natural object. It's something from nature. This program, mm -hmm. Dinya Wanda Live, is all about nature. So it has to be something natural, plant, animal, something in the countryside, in the sea. Just tell us what you think. As soon as answers start coming in, we'll think you've had all right. There we go. OK, time right. to start. Nature in summer. And there we've got a sea scene to start us off. What a lovely little fish. It's a beautiful fish. Not easy to photograph because it likes dark places, but it's mm. a, yeah, a red it's cardinal really, fish. It's really under rocks. It's our sea version of the goldfish. In, in a little cave. But yes. this is sea, of course. It's not. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's not fresh water, of course. No, no, we don't have fresh water just like that. Right. As we said, summer. Now you can tell that this picture has been taken in winter, can't you? What are the two most obvious things you can see there? I would say the water. Right. It's been raining, and the tree. That is a tree that has dropped its leaves, so it must be winter. And in winter, you get a lot of water. Now, the biggest problem for our nature is that it gets dry and there isn't water in summer. This, in fact, is a photo of the same place and they've put up a fence there, so that's the only difference. But otherwise, it's the same valley. This is Chadwick Lakes with Leia in Maltese. And you can see that the tree on the right hand side of the photo has leaves now because it's summer. And I took this photo what's today, Thursday. Yes, I took this photo on Monday. And you can see how much the water has gone down. In fact, most of it is just mud now. There's very little water left. So what does nature do without water in summer? Well, our nature has a lot of tricks up its sleeve. The first animal that comes to mind when you're talking about water is this little amphibian. Our Especially when you talk about Chadwick Lakes. <laughs> Indeed, yes. I remember going to Chadwick Lakes from when I was a child to see frogs. Now, this frog, our native painted frog, it's called, what does it do? It lives in water. So what happens? Tadpoles have grown into frogs because they would die. But how about the frogs? Where do they go? Well, they're not exactly going to go to a party by the poolside, are they? I mean, it would be nice to think that we can take all the animals and keep them nice and fresh and cool by the pool. But... Unfortunately, that's not what happens, so they have to find other ways of doing it. Frogs go underground. You see, if you go deep into the mud, you will find that it is still wet further down. We're not sure how far down frogs go, but we do know that they go and find a little moist place, a little wet place, and they make themselves a little hole which is their home for the summer. And they keep moist in there. They take water, as much water as they can down with them and they sleep throughout the summer. So they don't take breathing material, you know, to read something while, while uh, no. just before going to sleep. No. Uh, well, but well, I, I don't know, actually. That, that's what a scientist says. I don't know. I've never seen it, but <laughs> I can. Well, they're going to sleep. I don't think they have time to. I, and, they, and, and they're going to read, they're, they're going to read lamps, they're going to read light down there. I think we need to continue on the same lines oh, as we right. were doing before. Okay, okay. okay. let's reading business. Right. <laughs> so, when 
the season is over and it starts raining, the frogs feel it. We don't know whether they smell it, and some say that they can hear the rain hitting the ground, but whatever it is, they start waking up. And they feel the wet and they crawl their way out through the now wet mud until they get to the water. Ah, after a long period of sleeping in summer, it's called estivation, like hibernation, but in summer. And of course, they're very hungry. So they grab any insect that comes by. Zolot. <laughs> gotcha. And of course, they need to eat a lot because they've spent the summer without eating. How can they do that? Because they weren't moving. They weren't using energy. Now, there are other living things that have a lot of tricks for summer. And here's another one. Plants like this one. This is called the sea squill. Manage to survive from these beautiful green fleshy leaves in winter to this state in summer. What's happening here? Is it dying? No way. The energy and the green stuff and the good stuff in the leaves are going back into the plant. But hey, the plant is drying out. No, nope, it's a bulb. I'm going to move my cursor here. There. That white round thing there is a bulb. And here's another one. And these are sea squills asleep. This one's just waking up. In fact, it's autumn over here. There's probably another one there. And there's, there seems to be another one there. And that's what a bulb does. It stores all the energy and all, all the, the water yes. and all the goodness inside that big round thing. That's called a bulb, like onions. Onions are bulbs. And then at the height of summer in August, when it's really hot, they make a flower. How strange. So the leaves and the flower never meet because the leaves come out in winter when there's water and the flowers come in in the hottest part of summer. Why would they do that? Well, there is something to be got from that. You know what it is? There are very few flowers around at that time. So all the insects that, that survive the heat of the summer go for their flowers and pollinate them. Clever, huh? Clever, very clever. Very oh, clever. Yeah. All these tricks. And no competition. Not yeah. at all. Now here's another one. A tree can't exactly dry everything up and go into a bulb because it doesn't have a bulb. So this is the carob tree. Once there were a lot of carob trees in Malta and it's a very good tree to survive the summer heat. And here's the trick. Those leaves. Can you see how shiny the leaves are? It's like they're covered with wax. They are actually. They are actually because the plant makes that wax to keep the water inside and also so that the sunlight and the heat bounces off, reflects off the leaves and that way they keep cool. They keep so cool, they manage it so well that in August again, they ripen their fruit. This is the fruit of the carob tree. It's a carob pod, like, you know, like uh, beans, broad beans in a pod. But these ones go brown. Well, so do, the, so do the broad beans, actually, if you let them dry. And it survives the summer, even making fruit in the hottest time. Here's another trick. What are all these snails doing up a branch or a stick? They should be walking around, right? No way, not in summer. It's too hot and they would lose water. A snail loses water, it dies. So it just goes to sleep. But why climb up all the way? Let me show you. This is a drawing of soil at the bottom and a stick coming out of the soil. Now, the way heat works is that it's hotter near the ground than it is up there because a breeze that comes uh, past this branch will make the branch a bit cooler but it won't get to the ground. The ground will hold a lot of heat. In fact, if you had to get a thermometer and measure, the thermometer would show you that the ground is hotter than it is up there near the stick. So what does a snail do? It goes to the cooler part. Don't stay on the ground where it's hotter. Find something and go up and catch the breeze. If they stay on the ground, they'll be roasted. They'll be roasted, yes. Up there, at least, they can close off and go to sleep and keep the water inside their shell. 
Now here's two other animals that keep going throughout the summer. We have the sparrow on the left. You can see the male sparrow there with a caterpillar in his beak and the female inside a ventilator. That tells me that there is a nest. They have more than one nest. So they started in spring and they can have um, two nests and they raise two families. Not at the same time, of course. No. As if, they, if they nest early enough, and there will be and there will be enough time for the young to grow up and learn to fly, and then the parents have more time on their hands and they can lay again a second time. But they use the same nest in that case. And the same goes for the Sardinian warbler on the right. We have the male bird over there. The female must be catching food. They take it in turns so that they get a break from sitting all the time mm -hmm. in the nest or working to get animals all the time to feed the young. Now, if you remember when we spoke about migration, we said that in autumn, uh, the birds that are in Africa pass over Malta and go to the north so that they can have nests. And that was happening, sorry, that was in spring. I knew I got something wrong there. So that happens in spring because when we started the Dinuata Live, it was spring and it was happening right then. But now something different is happening because at the end of summer, it's time to go back to Africa before winter comes and the north freezes over. But hey, I said autumn, right? Isn't it too hot to do that sort of thing now? Not for everyone. Some birds come early. They've done their nesting, they're ready. They only raise one nest and they're ready to migrate. So what they do is they stop halfway. They fly from the north and they come down to Malta. These birds here have stopped at the Adira Nature Reserve. We have a green shank, a red shank, curly sandpipers. There are three different types. And they just just stop to spend the summer, to spend some time in summer here, catching insects and their food until autumn starts. Um, until they're ready to continue on their migration. They can stay a few days, maybe a few weeks. They're not in particular hurry here because yes. it's still early. There is no nest to think about because all, the, all that job has been done. And now all they need to do is wait a bit more and then fly off um, and continue their journey to Africa. And by the time it's autumn and winter, they're safely in Africa in a nice climate. Now here's another animal that needs water. And it's called a damsel fly. A damsel is a, a delicate, pretty young lady with a slim waist. You can see why it's called a damsel fly. And we have these in Malta, but you will only get them around ponds. Ponds, reservoirs, where farmers have their reservoirs, for example. There is a damsel fly laying eggs. So you can see that the straight body has been bent, almost double and the, the back part is touching the water. She's laying eggs, so that's a female. The one on the left was a male. And there's the young. The young is crawling over the bottom and he doesn't have wings. He lives in the water. What a good place to live if you can find a pond. Here's a related um, animal. It's the dragonfly. Very similar. It is quite the same. That's a male emperor dragonfly, the largest one we've got. And there is the female. Again, can you see that her body is bent? She's laying eggs. She's standing on a, a branch which is over water. You can see the brown in the background. And she's dipping her back part in the water to lay eggs. And this is the young. Let me show you what happens. The life cycle of a dragonfly. So the dragonfly on the right was living in water. Can you see that it has no wings, but it's ready to come out and change metamorphosis. Let's see what happens here. Not quite metamorphic wings. Uh, yes, there are changes. Of course, it has to grow wings. Of course, it's yes, 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 it is. It doesn't so, make a cocoon, however, or a few no. like butterflies. But look what happens. Yes. Look how it happens. Oh. It has split its skin and it's coming out. Whoa. There. It's like it's coming out of a, of a tent. 
Hmm. And it has a lot to unfold. There it is. Yes. Now it's removed its head and the body, the, 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 wow. the skin remains there and it's crawling out. There are those two white strings that make sure it opens out properly mm. and keeps it doing some acrobatics. Yeah, there. gymnastics. Mm. Wow. Imagine the first thing you do as a winged animal is you do gymnastics. <laughs> There, there it is, it's out. But hey, the wings aren't, uh, it's not going to fly. Wait a moment, it still has to pump blood into them, make them bigger, ah, look at that, and dry them out. There it is, it's ready. And the old skin is there. If you look for old skin near ponds, you will find them on these twigs coming out, on these little branches coming out, look for them. And that, that means that either a dragonfly or a damselfly have hatched into a winged animal. Now, here's something that is going on in summer. We found these in our garden only this week. This on the left here is a cane and it has been cut um, uh, so that the inside, the hollow part, can be seen. What about those caterpillars? What are they doing there? Those caterpillars have been caught by this animal. Oh, so they're not, they're not bonding up to go to sleep in there, those caterpillars? Um, fortunately not for them. <laughs> so this is a wasp. It's not a hornet. Hornets live in groups. This animal lives on its own and it is harmless. It's a kind of wasp. It catches caterpillars for its young. It lays its eggs among those caterpillars. And then, look, this is the cool thing. We took this photo two days ago. It closes it off. So the caterpillars are there. They're not feeling anything. They're, they're paralyzed. And the, uh, the, the, the animal, the wasp, covers it with a layer of mud. So when its young hatches, it has caterpillars to eat. And uh, where do they do this? If you want to have these things happening in your garden, um, all you have to do is put a bunch of reeds like that and uh, perhaps a couple of holes or they come in from the top. Here's a film of her, that wasp, coming and going. It's slow motion. So there she is coming. I had to wait half an hour for this. There she is coming. There is the top of the reed and she's coming out. Look, 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 she has taken a caterpillar and she's off to catch more. Hmm. That is the same reed that you saw in the photo. Filmed only yesterday. Nature yeah, is so does. fascinating. She lays eggs. And she lays on more the, on top of on it. On, on those caterpillars yes. and, and uh, shuts them in yes, with yes. mud. That's why it's a potter wasp. That's, it's a potter wasp, yes. Now here's another animal that's very busy raising its young. This is a crab spider. And over here it's getting very fat on the food it catches. Here's a, a, a bee. <laughs> I'm fortunate enough to have chosen this flower where there was a crab spider waiting for her but that's the cycle of life isn't it it's food chains and over here she has used that food in order to produce eggs so we see the white spider on top of a white patch those are her eggs and she's guarding it very fiercely don't you dare get close to my eggs we're checking it every day to see how long they take to hatch and what do people do they go to the beach they go to the sea. And this cartoon is telling me that nature says, uh-oh, people, because we forget that the sea is a habitat and that it's, it's there throughout the air and that things are living in it and they don't quite need us poking around and picking things and eating stuff because, well, it's nature and it needs to live. So here are two kinds of beaches, right? We have the rocky shore and we have the sandy shore. Both of them have their own kinds of life. When we talked about habitats, we said that animals are adapted, that is their bodies and the things they do, help them live in that particular place. Here, for example, I see something that happens every, um, every time that the sea is a bit rough. I see um, seaweed piled up on the beach. This is a sandy beach. And one thing that I hear people say is, oh, yeah, how dirty it's sticking to me. Well, it's like being in a forest, isn't it? And leaves on the ground. 
these are dead leaves that have been washed up by uh, by the sea, by the currents, by the waves. And uh, what people do is that they get their bulldozers out and they just bulldoze it off so that we have a nice clean beach to stay on. Well, that was nature and that's habitat. And we really have no right to be doing these things, do we? Because there are animals living in them. For example, this um, cousin of the woodlouse. It's, it's a sea woodlouse, if you like. It's called a sea slater. And this one is on sand and this one lives on rocks. And both of them need alga. So then people come along and say, I want it nice and clean. And they bulldoze off the, the sea slaters and the alga all together. The whole food chain, basically, which probably is not dump, very nice. Probably dump, dump them somewhere dry in a field. Well, all, yes. this, all this life will die then. And they use it as compost. Which is such a pity. We are a bit, we are very rough with nature, aren't we? That's why we do Dinya Wahda. So that we learn to love nature. In fact, nature has so much to cope with without us because I mean, imagine you live near the shore. You've got waves all the time washing over you. And if it's rough, it's going to hit you hard. So how does nature actually live? How do animals actually live in here? Let's start with the plant. The beginning of the food chain, right? These plants have very strong roots. So for one, when the waves are hitting hard, they can't move them off. They can't pull them out. But they have another trick. You see, you can't drink salt water. Just like it is harmful to us, it's harmful to plants. But if that's all there is in summer, what do you do? You don't drink. Oh, I should have had a photo there. If you can see from the leaves, the, it is so, their leaves are fleshy. They contain, the one on the right shows you, they're a bit like fingers full of water. So when it rains during the winter, during the autumn, they store as much water as they can. So that in summer, they use that water and they don't pull up any more water from the roots because it will be too salty. More tricks. These two animals live on in the splash zone, that is at the shore where waves splash. And if you're not careful, if you don't have tricks, if you're not adapted, you will just be washed away. The blenny on the left has those two special fins which it uses like hands. Can you see how it's holding on to the pebbles? So that it, it's cute, it's like hands, isn't it? And then we have the limpet on the right, a fascinating creature. It's, it's awful how all people think is, let's eat, oh, let's pull them off and eat them. Why? Don't you have enough to eat? That limpet is so clever at surviving, at living. When there are waves, for one, it has a flat body so that it doesn't have uh, big bits that can be pulled out by the waves that can be hit. For another, it has a very strong muscle. Its whole body is a muscle that holds very, very tightly onto the rock. And for another third stick, it has a very special tongue. Its tongue has 100 rows of teeth. And in each row, there are 10 teeth. And those teeth are the strongest living material, living stuff. They are the strongest in the world that we know of, that scientists know about. They are so strong, they can even grind, they can even scrape rock. Look what a lovely little hole it has carved for itself. So does it do it every day? No. It, in the evening, it wanders about like a snail. It grazes alga, it eats alga, and then it goes back to the same place. It leaves a slime trail like land snails do. So fascinating, isn't it? Next time you see a limpet, don't think about eating it, please. Think about how fascinating it is, how cool, how wonderful. You've got enough to eat in your bag. No, I'm quite sure of that. I know I do. Let's see what we've got here. I think we've got those blennies. Yeah, look at them here. So two blennies here called Molly Millers, holding on for dear life as they face each other. Two males fighting over territory. Look how they're using their fins. There are currents. You can see alga floating by, pushing them. And the one on the right has lost and it backs off. Did you see the fins, how it uses them? Fascinating, isn't it? Can you see them again? There you look. look at that. Look how they're using the fins. Facing each other. The one on the left seems to be dominant. That's quite a current. Bigger. Seems to be stronger. It's quite a current, look. But they hold on more than me because I was moving with the camera. 
Now, all you need to see this is goggles, goggles and a pipe, because the first, uh, the first meter of water, meter is about, um, I don't know, the height, the, the height of a, a six-year-old child. So it, it's the, all the life, there's so much life over there, just goggles, that's all, and learn to see things. For example, one thing I love doing is waiting for blennies to pop out of their little holes. The one in the middle you can see there, Sphinx blenny. Its head is popping out. You have to wait a bit, but that's the fun of nature. It's the patience and the reward. And these blennies like to live safe in holes, close to holes where they can back into in case danger arrives. And these are all different types. So many of them. There are many, many more as well. See how many you can find this summer. These fish are easier to see. So we have the sea bream here. On the left is a two banded because it's got two black bands, sea bream. And on the right is a white sea bream. Easier to see. Don't take them for granted. Watch them. See how they behave. Do they stay alone? Do they stay in groups? This one, for example, the damselfish definitely likes to stay in very large numbers. Have you ever seen the young? They are electric blue, really beautiful, but they stay, they stay a bit more hidden. These ones just hang around eating plankton. Very sweet when you see the face, a bit of a sad face actually, a really cute fish. Ah, a beautiful rainbow wrasse. This is a male over here. The females are browner, they don't have these beautiful colours. And here is our tropical fish. Doesn't it look exactly like an aquarium fish? Well, this is our brightest colored fish and it's called a peacock grass. On the left, we have a female. And when the female is old enough, surprise, surprise, it changes into a male. In fact, the males on the right are always bigger because as they grow older, they become males. How strange, isn't it? Now, this striped red mullet is poking around in the alga at the bottom. It's got those two... It's like a catfish. Uh, like a catfish. It's got those two feelers and it feels where its prey is, where its food is. It digs around. It digs around. It's looking for little crustaceans, little, little snails and little things like that. And of course, it's not just fish. There's a lot of different kinds of life under the sea. And these are all related. They're all from the same family. The starfish, we have top right and top left and bottom right. And we have sea urchins and we have sea cucumbers. They are strange enough, isn't it? But they're all related. They're all cousins, if you like, of each other. Fascinating. Don't just go and pick sea urchins. And well, if, the, if you stand on them and they prick you, yes, ouch, of course, ouch. Who, who has never had this happen to them? I mean, come on, we've all had a bit of a sea urchin once or twice in our life. Just be careful, get a mask and you'll see them. But you can't blame them, can you? Would you want to be stepped on by an enormous creature? Come on, let's be nice. And here we have crabs. On the right, we have a shore crab, which you will see crawling around the shore. Don't pick them up, please. They don't like it. And don't definitely don't pull their legs off or don't eat them again. You've got enough food in your hamper. And it's, just, it's probably some people, they, they have nothing else to do while they're on the beach. And say, so they say, OK, let's go and catch some animals like they're there, like the animals are there for us to catch. It's nasty. It's nasty. I think you're right, actually. It's because we have nothing to do. Get a mask and see if you can see all the things we showed you over here. For example, on the left, is the hermit crab. Now for hermit crabs, you need a bit of patience because when you touch the shell that a hermit crab has taken, that is an empty snail shell, right? It crawls into it and um, it will immediately go back in. So if you like, underwater, put it on your hand and wait for it to come out and you will be rewarded. We had to wait quite a bit for this one to come out and take a good photo. We have so many bad photos of this animal. Here, here, look at this one, look at this one. Again, we had to wait ages for it, but then we made it, look. And there it is walking. And in front of it, you can see smaller ones. Those are the same animal, they're just younger. So when you're younger, you find a small snail shell. When you're older, you have to find a big snail shell. Those are snails that have died. 
they leave their shells behind, of course, and these hermit crabs find the shell that fits them. I think one on the bottom there is probably um, there. It could be changing. This one could be moving into this one. Hmm, I wonder. And all this, remember when we did food chains? What does a food chain always start with? The sun and plants. All this depends on plants. And here is a very important plant. It's called the Neptune grass. Remember at the beginning, I told you that we say, oh, all this alga on, the, on my feet that's washed up on the shore. Those would be dead parts of leaves, like dead leaves in a forest from this particular plant. And it's a very important one. For one, you only find it in Malta, in the Mediterranean. And it's, do you remember the word? Endemic. You only find it here. Fish lay eggs in it. Lots of animals, young animals, hide among it. It's like a nursery. It's where they stay to hide from predators. When they're big enough, they swim out. Very important plant. So we have a challenge for you. This summer, why don't you get yourself a camera, maybe for a birthday or something, save up for it. And there are cameras. There are a lot of types of cameras. Don't go for an expensive one. You don't need an expensive one, especially if it's your first one. Get a camera that can go underwater and take photos and see how many things you can see. It is one of the best ways. First of all, you've got something to do. It's a challenge because it's not easy. You have to wait. I have some animals which I'm still trying to get a good photo of. And it also lets you learn so much. Look at this, for instance. This is something I like to do so that I can see them, how they behave. I like feeding. <laughs> There's just a bit of bread there. And look at all the Molly Millers coming in. You can see who is dominant, who eats more. The one that was waiting over there. This isn't a fish. No, no that's a shrimp. It's a glass shrimp. <laughs> and it's tickly and it's really cute on my hand. And it's you, so you trusting. Mean, it's made of glass. No, because you can see through it. <laughs> and here are two different. There's uh, Incognitus there and the Molly Miller. So many different things and you learn so much. And it's a nice tickle on your hands. I mean, these little, they're, they're harmless. And in fact, if you are, if you become a member of Club Hutaf or you are in Club Hutaf and you send us your photos, we will get them in Il Hutafa, which is our magazine. I do encourage you to join our club because we are all people who love nature. I'm sure you are if you're watching this today. So join us. It's only 10 euro a year and it's very easy to join. Get into our website, find join, ask a parent and they will help you fill in the form. These are all the wonderful people here. Thank you to uh, the people who lent us their photos. We have our photos and also other people you see their names over here. And of course, as always, to Steff, who was our office backup. Mystery object. Tell us, Vic, what did you find? <laughs> well, would you know? Nobody. Really? <laughs> Nobody got the answer. Oh. However, some got really, really close and most of the answers where um, uh, had to do with the sea. So said okay, they had sea good. slugs, there was eel, nice. fish scales, uh -huh. seaweed, stingray, jellyfish, shark, oh, wow. electric eel, and uh -huh. snake. Oh. And, well, the closest maybe was the sea slug because it's a okay. relation to this animal. But actually what well, the animal was, was a cuttlefish. <laughs> Sitcha in Maltese. <laughs> yeah, well, it was it wasn't easy because those colors, these animals, they change them all the time. Even if a couple of minutes be before we took this picture, it was all different. There weren't any any dots and things. It was completely stripy, for example. But they changed. Their camouflage is, ex uh, is, is, is exciting and wonderful. So well, thanks for all your efforts. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they got very, very well, quite close. We love your imagination, though. We mm. really, really do. That's why we, we don't help. <laughs> they, yeah, that's why we don't help. Right. The caption. So what was really happening in this photo? The one on the left with black wings, that is called a black winged stilt. Uh, did I get that right? No. Yes? 
Black Wings did, right? I yes, 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 yes. Uh, suddenly I saw its red legs and I thought, hang on, it's the red leg. He's defending, he's he's defending his nest. He has a nest over there and uh, they don't like anyone to get close. And uh, little Egret on the right is kind of taken aback. Oh, all right, I'll move away. But we had some really creative answers, a lot of answers. We're not going to get them all. We're just getting one that tickled us. I've been practicing, oh, there's a typo there, practicing this dance all day long. Would you like me to join? Dancing is my passion. Very creative. We love the way you invent and you see things. Keep it coming. Um, don't lose that imagination. Don't turn into boring adults. Become adults who still have stories inside them. This one was sent to us by Luca Grek, uh, who goes to Hattard Primary. Well, that's our address there, dinyawad at birdlifemalta.org. If you need to write to us, we're still here in summer. We're just going to stop the live events. We are still here. We still have a team. It's not just myself and Vic. There are still people in the education team, and we will take your answers, your comments, your photos, your memberships if you want to join us. There's the Facebook page. It will keep you updated. If the situation changes, we will be able to do activities as well with people, families, and watch out for them in Facebook. Last request from our, from our side, please give us feedback. There is a form, it's very easy, just click on it, it will open, just tell us what you think. Whether you're a student, a child, parent, teacher, and if you're a teacher, don't forget, there's the points for this session only, then uh, the online, for this period, the online awards. So switching back here, there we go. so we're back, yeah. Um, right. Well, that's really all the headphones for uh, for today and also for this series of, of um, um, uh, episodes for this series of programs. We really, really enjoyed um, creating them and even more presenting them, although we had we often had a, a few technical problems, but that's oh. not. <laughs> <laughs> but we always learn from our mistakes, I Absolutely. hope. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so uh, we hope you enjoy your summer. Okay, maybe, maybe, who knows, maybe we'll meet again. Um, something similar, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll cook, keep thinking. We'll cook something up, maybe we'll, uh, we'll meet again. Send online. us your feedback. Okay, yes, please do send us your feedback, Teachers. send us your ideas, send Tell us, us your suggestions. What do you think went wrong? What, what did you find boring? What did you find interesting? Okay, and that way you can always improve if we uh, make, uh, if we have future, if we have something similar in if you're a teacher and you want to tell us how you think a live session perhaps once a week once two weeks could help you during class if you tell us tell us about it you have a feedback form uh, the more we communicate the more we can help each other and always okay. love nature so on behalf of the new mother and bird like malta okay bye 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 and, and enjoy the fun. summer have fun this summer bye guys bye thanks for watching